some of the CBOs working in climate resilience, working directly with community members. Um, you know, some of you may be here right now. Um, but this is a great chance to just meet people throughout the day. It's 8 to 6 p.m. You don't have to stay for the whole day if you can't make it. It's encouraged to just come to whatever part that you can. Um, and I called out here some of the breakout sessions that we're going to be having. And again, Thrive is a co-host on this, um, along with Climate Resilient Communities, Nuestra Casa and Rice Health City. Uh, so you'll see a, a quite a big presence uh, from staff members from these organizations within the breakouts and panels. Um, but we have funding for community resilience, super relevant for organizations working in disaster, um, strategic collaboration and mapping resources for resilience. This is actually where we're going to be talking about the mapping tool that I demoed uh, two to three months ago for co-ed organizations. Uh, we'll also get to see examples from Santa Clara County and San Francisco. Um, so that will be a very interesting one as well. So resilience hub session in the afternoon, um, which has a really great lineup as well, nature-based solutions, youth voices and, and the climate movement. So um, Great lineup, please come. Everyone is welcome. It's free and it's gonna be very fun. All right, um, October is coming up very soon somehow. And uh, October, this is earthquake month, right? This is where we're gonna have the great shakeout. Um, this is a global drill, but in California, um, this is, I, I would say like it's, there's a lot of participation in California. I think it's a bigger deal here. <laughs> so it's October 19th at 1019. Um, millions of people have already signed up to participate. Essentially what this is, if you've never heard about it, it's doing an earthquake drill all at the same time as the rest of the world um, or the rest of whatever your time zone is, I suppose. Um, so, you you know, this could look like drop, drop cover and hold and then do an evacuation drill. Um, it's really whatever your organization feels is best. But the idea is to get your staff your students, your clients, um, practicing with their bodies what you do in an earthquake. We can intellectually know what to do, but behavior in a real in a real event really depends on whether your body remembers. So that's why it's important to actually practice the drills. And this is a really great opportunity to do it. So if you're interested or you just want to pass along the opportunity, to your kid's school or your family, um, you can just go to shakeout.org, register your organization. You don't even have to do it on October 19th. You can decide to do it any time of the year, but this is kind of when it's it's kind of a collective drill. So it's pretty fun. Uh, we have an upcoming Environment and Sustainability Thrive Action Group meeting on October 26th. Um, we met with the Green Business Program uh, the Green Business Program is statewide, but um, there, uh, Lawrence Nussbaum is uh, manages this program for San Mateo County. In the past, they have offered rebates for sustainability measures, so um, replacing your light bulbs, or honestly, I can't remember the the list of things that they do, but they provide rebates to small businesses, typically, um, usually in equity priority communities. Um, just to make it easier for small business owners to adapt sustainability measures. What's new is that they are now also offering rebates for climate resilience equipment and materials. So this could look like air purifiers. It might look like, I mean, it, it, there's a lot of flexibility in the program from what I understand um, because it's so nascent right now that if you are a small business or you know of a small business that might be interested in this, and they have a specific ask, um, they might be able to go through this program to get rebates on, on whatever that um, kind of mitigation measure is that they want. Uh, the prerequisite is that they do have to have followed the basic sustainability metrics for the program. So this event on the 26th, we will go over it um, together. We'll have a pre presentation from Lawrence and you can um, ask him questions about you know, what it takes to become eligible or, or you know, anything about the program that you want. Um, but it is exciting that they are starting to provide materials for climate resilience as well as sustainability. This will be online, even though it doesn't say that, but you'll, you'll hear more from us soon on this. 
All right, um, basic co-ed updates. A couple of months ago, we talked about well check programs, particularly in the context of high heat events. Uh, we had talked about the, the role of neighborhood networks and a lot of them are in on this conversation. Uh, CERT groups began exploring this idea too. We were holding separate meetings with CERT um, to explore whether it was feasible for existing um, you know, fire protection group districts, usually the, the agency responsible for managing CERTs could develop well check programs. That's still under development, um, but we do have an upcoming project in collaboration with the Leadership Council for San Mateo County and senior co siders to look at a pilot program on the coast. Um, if you're interested in learning more about this, if you're interested in well check programs at all right now, um, go ahead and email me and I'm sure that we can find um, like a good avenue for collaboration, whether it's with the networks, the certs, or this last project on the bullet list. But we definitely want to keep momentum going uh, on these. Um, we're also developing our training menu, our co-ed training menu for 2023 to 24. Um, Next year, we'll almost certainly have the same suite that we did this year, which is incident command system, emergency response plan development, and continuity of operations. Um, but we're looking at what else organizations might have a need for. So if you have uh, an idea of, of emergency related issues you'd like training in, um, go ahead and email me and we can discuss that and potentially just how we could incorporate that um, into existing trainings or make it a standalone. Um, finally, we're wrapping up our Secure Your Space project, which you probably heard me talk about before. We got a grant from Earthquake Country Alliance to provide materials to nonprofits and childcare centers um, to essentially strap heavy things to the wall. Um, we have some remaining materials. If you are interested, uh, let me know and we can we can get them to you. Um, and potentially, potentially help with installation. All right, um, I wanna just give some time for any folks on the call to give their own share out, anything new that's happened since we've last met, um, or feel free to talk about training needs or any questions about what I just um, went through. Is there someone right. I can read more about the well check meeting or well check program? I'm not familiar with that. It's not an existing program yet. So it was more of a concept, an idea that we had discussed around high heat season because there was an identified gap in um in response to high heat events through the normal channels, right? So typically um, what would happen was there might be communications about high heat very late after we've gotten to um, a heat emergency. And those thresholds were very high, in fact, where we know that even 85 degrees can cause um, negative health impacts on older adults and people with disabilities, young people too. Um, so it was a concept we had put forward based on some other models we've seen outside of San Mateo County. One of those is in San Francisco. It's called the Neighborhood Empowerment Network. Um, we've also seen programs on the East Coast that mirror that a little bit using CERT. And so we got CERT groups together. And uh, as I mentioned, these are usually fire protection districts because these are the agencies that run CERT programs in San Mateo County for the most part. We got those coordinators together to talk about the possibility of uh, developing a program in San Mateo County through their own districts. And um, while there's very high interest in it, there uh, were some obstacles as well. So we're still very much in that exploration period. Um, neighborhood networks, on the other hand, which are separate from CERT and have a little bit more flexibility in what they can and can't do. Um, some of them have started things that, that mirror well check programs. Um, so one place that um, I can connect you to if you're interested is, um, so, oh, Menlo Park CERT, is there, Men, Petra, is it Menlo Park CERT? I feel like there's a different name for it. Uh, it's MPC, Menlo MPC. Park. Right, Menlo Park. M MPC something. MPC, it's a great acronym. MPC Ready, yeah, it's MPC Ready. 
uh, Lynn Bramlett. So um, they they do some level of well check in their community. Um, so it's it's definitely popping up in an organic way in some areas of the county, but there are enormous geographic gaps. There are parts of the county that don't have any sort of well check protocol at all. Um, and again, we we saw something more organic pop up on the coast side during and after the storms. Um, and we heard from senior co-siders about this actually, that while this might've been helpful to an extent, um, a lot of the same people got called over and over again, and a lot of people didn't get called at all, which kind of just reinforces the need for a more thoughtful um, program, pre-existing program, not something that you improvise on the spot. Um, so I can't point you to a website right now, but I could connect you to a few people who are doing this um, in a more improvised manner, if you're interested. Gotcha. Okay. I'm probably not at that point yet. I didn't know if there was like a, you know, something to implement, like a toolkit or something to help us start thinking about it, but that's really helpful background. Thank you. Uh, I'm happy to send out some of the materials from Neighborhood Empowerment Network in San Francisco. They have some materials. Um, I know they they like wrote a white paper on it. They have some templates, they some worksheets for community members interested in, in a model like that. So I can dig those up and send them out. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Anyone else have questions or just report outs what you've been up to the last two months? Everybody's so quiet today. How about if everybody just quickly introduces themselves? We'll just do a popcorn one and just say what organization you're from. So, Fatra Thrive Alliance. Um, I'm going to put it over to Veronica. Hi, everyone. Uh, Veronica with Unite Us. Uh, how about my? Hi, everyone. I'm my use she, her pronouns. I'm a community health planner at San Mateo County Health. I'll pass it to Claire. Hey, good morning, everyone. My name is Claire. I also use she, her pronouns. Um, I'm with United Way Bay Area, so we're in eight counties in the Bay, and I represent the 211 program. Um, and I put it in the chat, but I'm I'm part of six VOADs and COADs, and we had the the San Francisco Neighborhood Empowerment Network. They presented at our SFOAD, like, I don't know, five months ago or so. And it was super informative and really helped build partnerships within that VOAD. So I, maybe they would present here. Or I don't know if that'd be helpful. Um, I found it really useful. Oh, and I will pass it to Katie. Hello, everyone. Katie Galanos with Unite Us. Good to see some familiar faces. And I will pass it over to Belinda. I put it in the chat oh, as well. Hi. I'm just, I'm just observing. <laughs> hi, Belinda. I'll pass it to Marcella. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Marcella Miranda. I'm with San Mateo County Office of Education. I'm the Director of School Community Partnerships. Um, and I'm really happy to be here and learning more about um, all the wonderful things that are happening here in San Mateo. Um, if I can just very quickly let you know that um, part of the uh, work that I'm that I'm doing with San Mateo County is that I'm supporting with the initiative of what is known as community schools. Some of you may or may not have heard about it. Um, I am currently working on um, on our website. So that should be coming up pretty soon um, to give the community more information about what 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 this is. Um, but in addition to that, um, you know, ba basically what it is, is that it's initiative that um, is meant to have a really, um, a really uh, a way for communities to work with various partners, not only nonprofits, but also private, um, and basically help create a really 
a great ecosystem, I like to call it, for the entire community. Um, and so you may be uh, hearing from me, I might be reaching out to folks because many of our districts are ready to start reaching out and building partnerships based on their community needs. Um, and so, and, and the parent and community voices. And so the idea is for me to start connecting with folks and, and priming them kind of, of like what community schools are and like what a good partnership could look like. Um, and so um, hence the reason why I'm here today to meet all you wonderful people. And I look forward to um, connecting with you. And if I don't connect with you for some reason, you're uh, more than welcome to connect with me. I will go ahead and put my information in the chat. Thank you. And I, I, I lost track, I'm sorry. Um, I'll pass it over to Amber. Uh, or how about Ken? Good morning, everybody. My name is Ken Anderson, Senior. I'm with the City of South San Francisco Fire Department. I'm the Emerging Manager. Thanks for uh, having the meeting and uh, just trying to learn a little bit more about what Thrive does and help uh, support them in any way I can. I'm, I'm sorry, do I pass it on to somebody else now? Is that how it works? I see you guys shaking yes. Jackie? I am Jackie Weiler and I am the Operations Administrator at HIP Housing. And I'm grateful to be here today and I'll push, I'll uh, pass it over to Ken. I think Ken's already gone. I think we're missing uh, Robert. Thanks so much. Uh, my name is Robert Gibbons. I'm the Director of Education and Advocacy at Cal Nonprofits, California Association for Nonprofits. Also a uh, member of uh, NERP here in San Francisco from my neighborhood. Um, I know that we would be happy to do something with you all um, on the NERP side. Um, and additionally, um, Cal Nonprofits is part of a consortium that puts together a Northern California policy forum. And next month's topic is actually disasters. So this coincides nicely. So I'm happy to be here with everyone and I'll be reaching out uh, and providing some information about uh, that upcoming forum if you care to join. Christian, I think we're missing you. Hello everyone, I'm Christian Gonzalez. So I recently moved to San Francisco from Colombia. Uh, I'm very interested in, in these topics and I am an expert in urban resiliency. Uh, especially in disaster risk reduction and vulnerability reduction for communities in disadvantage. So, so yeah, nice to meet you. Great. Did we get everyone? Has anyone not gone besides Ken? All right. Just a note about the Neighborhood Empowerment Network, because Claire, you made that comment. Um, uh, Daniel Holmesy, who manages the program, will actually be on a panel at the Climate Summit on October 11th, um, the one that is called Strategic Collaboration and Mapping Resources. <laughs> the name has changed a couple of times, but it's it's one of the panels in the afternoon. Um, so again, another plug to come to the Climate Summit. You can learn a lot from different counties as well as San Mateo County, and we just have a great lineup there. So, all right, um, with that, I am gonna pass it over to Veronica from Unite Us. Um, they have a great presentation today about their platform, which is super relevant to organizations um, that are interested in, in um, essentially reducing risk for communities during disaster, um, especially if you provide direct client services. Mm -hmm. So, um, Veronica, are you okay sharing your screen? Yes, thank you, Anna. Um, as long as you're able to, oh, perfect. Share privileges, so I'll go ahead and do that. Um, thanks everyone for 
for um, being a part of this collab and then allowing us to participate. It's been great to learn from you all. Um, so I'm here with Katie, my um, colleague from Unitas, where, um, yeah, like Unitas is going on 10 years this year. It was founded by two veterans uh, where they were transitioning back into civilian life and um, they were facing barriers. It was taking a long time for the referral process and they wanted a way to essentially be more trauma-informed and client-centered. So with Unitas, it connects health and social care. Um, curious, would love to, you know, put it in the, you know, if you all um, could share in the chat, you know, ways that you all currently make referrals, if you do have that, and maybe some of the challenges that you're currently facing when you do make referrals. And, um, and don't be shy. Feel free to ask any questions at any point in time. So in terms of Unitas, it was on the left-hand side of the screen is the traditional method of, of um, making referrals where, you know, prior to coming to Unitas, I spent at one point over seven plus years working with a nonprofit providing services to survivors of intimate partner violence and human trafficking. And before with, you know, while, while I was working there, we oftentimes would give them a handout and that says, you know, here are all the resource cards, put it in your shoe, or we would have them, you know, navigate the system on their own or, or whenever they did just, you know, become a client, we would help them navigate the process. But oftentimes it would take a long time and they, they would face a number of challenges, anywhere from language barriers to just feeling discouraged and having, you know, getting re-traumatized. So with the Unitas platform on using that on the right side, you know, we're again, like really putting the client at the center where providers are providing that wraparound service and putting, you know, being trauma-informed, they're coordinating and um, they're essentially enhancing services in veteran communities. Um, so here, Katie, do you want to speak to this slide? Absolutely. So hello, everyone. Um, so I'm Katie Galanos. I, I think I mentioned that in the beginning. Um, and also just to kind of provide you all with just some some level setting context, definitely for today's discussion, Veronica and I wanted to just kind of bring together more and how Unitas has been supporting um, community network coordination in those disaster um, relief events. And so one example that we wanted to kind of bring to light for everyone, just to kind of know again of a local kind of partner in a local county that's been doing this work and um, seeing how it really can change how organizations can coordinate together is with our partnership with uh with uh Boot Glen 211. And so in this process, they have joined as a partner. So every you know organization is able to join uh the network. You know, there's a registration form, so you're able to kind of set up your your profile. And then as you are a part of that network, you're now a part of something that is an up-to-date real-time network of need because all of our partners are able to update their programs, their services, their capacity. There's no um, gatekeeping entity that Unite Us is, is, you know, kind of monitoring. All of our partners are able to, to really serve um, in that uh, way. And so as you can see kind of with what's written on the slide here, Unite Us is serving as that single database for the volunteer organizations active in disaster, so a VOAD, right, to share that updated information regarding their role and services in preparation for natural disasters in the event, the pre-event, and then during and post. And what we have seen as a lot of benefits with 
Tara and team is through the use of our assistance request form capability. And this is something that Veronica is going to show during our brief little demo for you all today. But essentially what we can do and to support is we can actually set up a community member portal that can be, um, you know, retrieved or accessed through a, a website. So an organization's website, potentially the Thrive Alliance's website, wherever we want that to be located. It can also be something that's accessed through a QR code. So if you're in community in a workshop, maybe you're doing um, <clears throat> an assistance distribution event, uh, community members can easily request the services that they're needing through that form. And then all of those submissions go directly into the Unite Us account. Um, so that's just one example. And to give you kind of more of a larger like state scale example, we have a state partnership with the state of Florida right now. Um, we're going on year two for their hurricane relief. So we've fully mobilized the state, uh, you know, yet again, with this assistance request form capability to again, help with um, any those, you know, impacted community <clears throat> members to get uh, services. So wanted to kind of just set the stage a little bit in terms of how we are truly helping within this kind of sector, within this focus. And then with Veronica's demo, I think all this will kind of come to light. Um, and then happy to answer any questions or if there's any thoughts coming up, because I know I kind of shared a lot in this slide, but then I do have one more slide that's just going to allow us or allow me to kind of communicate and articulate a little bit more of how the platform works from like an infrastructure uh, functionality uh, moment or, you know, time and place. So when we think about a referral platform, um, we may be used to using, um, if we're in housing, our county HMIS system, or <clears throat> to Claire's point, um, being able to send referrals into 211. What Unite Us is doing is really trying to hone in on that person-centered community-based system where all of the providers have access to the network where you're able to really easily look up and identify the right services for your community member. Um, and then those service providers are all able to really view, coordinate, and collaborate. Now, there's some caveats to that, which I won't get into right now, but the idea here that I just want us to kind of embrace is knowing that when you are connected with an individual, you will then have the ability to um, follow their client journey. Um, so if that means that they then need to be connected to the food bank or if they then need to be connected to pick up potentially like sandbags for their homes, you're able to really see that uh, information. And everything is very focused on the outcomes for understanding, did that client get connected to care? And if they didn't, what actually occurred? Um, so again, you'll see this in the demo, um, just because again, I'm a very visual person, but just want to kind of set the stage a little bit. And then I think it's also important to just know the depth of county coordination that we've had. Um, Petra, just to call you out a little bit, because it's so good to see your face. We met, I think, a couple of years ago, right before San Francisco and San Mateo was about to launch, which um, I facilitated back in last February of 2022. And since then, you know, San Francisco has now had three county partnerships. We can see a couple on screen with Department of Public Health and Disability Aging Services, we have the city of Long Beach, um, which Veronica is going to share an example of their assistance request form for you all. And so I and so again, I think it's just helpful to understand that this goes beyond um just within our, our community-based organizations, right? We really need kind of that cross-sector um coordination to to really make this as empowering and, and impactful as possible. So um again, happy to be here and and happy to answer any questions, but I'll uh, I'll kick it back to Veronica. Thanks, Katie. Um, so in terms of, like we mentioned, with the platform, it's really about coordinated care. And as you can see, like with this individual, um, you know, they were able to say, you know, access, get access to clothing, toiletries, and the providers that are making these requests, they're able to in real time what services the uh, client was able to receive and what was not available. And, and then across the nation, um, we're in over 44 states. And here are some of the 
organizations that have invested in the platform so that community-based organizations can access these services at no cost. And here in California, we're covering about almost 80% of the population and we hope to cover the entire state. Um, anywhere from legal services to you know, the Office of Public Defenders in San Francisco or legal aid. Um, so there, those are some of our partners. And then in San Mateo, um, here are some of the organizations, the partners that are also on board. Um, and then with Unitas, all partners after- Sorry, can you go back for a minute to the to the San Mateo ones? I think that's of interest to all of us. Sure. Um, so- I can't read that fast. <laughs> <laughs> no problem, Petra. I'm just trying to allocate time and make more time for the demo. <laughs> Veronica, do we have any public agencies or any, any that are considering um, using the platform at this time? Yeah, I can jump in just because I have been supporting San Mateo um, primarily since we launched last year. So in terms of um, public agencies or, or county agencies right now, we are in discussion with the um, aging department because SIDS is the Center of Independence is working on uh, drafting a proposal that so they can support San Mateo for your first kind of integrated hub of an ADRC or a, a adult um disability resource center so we're excited about that they're working on their proposal which is due next month and then we're going to kind of talk more about you know the the nuances of like data and, and database stuff um so that's helpful and then also just knowing that we have had conversations within human services and as you know since you all are part of san mateo how human services that's where our core agencies reside and um we want to be able to really support holistically that little network but also the parks department and everyone else that's kind of a part of human services so i'm hoping you know through our support through today's conversation marcella definitely want to have more conversations with you because i've had had conversations with um kathy and uh justin Watkins from office of education so i think as we just strengthen our networking in general that we'll be able to um again, just kind of expand more on, on these partnerships and um, also understanding that there has just been a lot going on this year weather-wise. And so that has impacted, right, what our priorities and focuses are. But that's just to give you uh, some details and and hopefully, you know, we'll be able to, to expand more. Those county conversations go a little slower too, as I'm sure you, you know. <laughs> but go ahead, Veronica. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that those insights, Katie. Yeah, in terms of um, organizations that are utilizing the platform, once they've made either you know five referrals, um, they're able to get data points that can track you know anywhere from demographic information to you know the impact, like the outcomes, the type of services that the clients are seeking and be able to see some of the deficits. So organizations are able to go back to the funders and say like, here's here's been our impact. And also, we're also seeing these disparities so they can go back and, um, and ask for more funding. And then in terms of security, uh, we do take our, um, you know, information, you know, privacy and, security very seriously. Um, UNITAS is 42 CFR part two certified, um, FERPA as well as HIPAA compliant. And we'll be happy to share out the compliance policy in case anyone wants to review that or bring it back to your organizations. And then we'll go ahead and jump into the software demo. So um, yeah, and again, if there's any questions, feel free to ask. This is a space for all of you all to, to learn, get your answers um, answered. And um, so in terms of our platform, it looks very much like an email inbox where if any needs action comes in, um, it'll prompt you with, you know, a red, red action. And also um, if there's any 
needs action that needs to take place. Um, individuals will get notified via email. So you don't have to live in this platform. And this is our demo environment. So all information here is fictitious. Um, so here I see that there's an, um, you know, a, an action needed where um, Eugene Flack has, is someone that needs services. So as the provider, I'm logged in today as Larry June. And um, I see that in the referral description, you know, client lost their home due to recent fires. So I'm gonna go ahead and accept them into um, our organization to provide services since we provide emergency housing. So I'm gonna go ahead and say take action. Um, as the primary care worker, you know, like we can assign like different cases if there's depending on different programs, I'll go ahead and accept and um, accept the case. So in terms of, of you know, once and, you know, I'll provide those services and in order to, prov so an organization will then, the referring organization will then be able to know here are, you know, their case was accepted. And once the a service is provided, we can go ahead and close the case. And so we'll go ahead and say, you know, resolved, or maybe it's unresolved. Sometimes, um, you know, maybe the client changed their mind or their situation changed. Um, documenting that is just as important. So for our purposes, we'll go ahead and say resolved. Um, client was able able to receive housing. Um, and then we'll close the case. And anytime a, a client receives any type of service, we can open a new case, just like you all would do that in within your organizations when you're managing cases. So um, we'll go ahead and go to our, our um, profile, client profile, where here we're able to add, you know, the care team, family members that are available. Um, we're able to uh, message the client directly and add any notes. Like maybe if, you know, client only speaks a certain language or client wants to be contacted at a certain time, or maybe client, um, Whatever notes that would be relevant to have the next provider be aware of, you can that could be added here. And notes can also be indicated that you know you only want to share these notes within the organization as well. You know, if, that, if information needs to be uploaded, it could be uploaded, and then referrals. And this is also where the client. Um, consent lives because we're not able to refer a client outside of the organization um, unless consent is provided. So we're going to go ahead and let's say, you know, someone were new to and, and they wanted to 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 um, get a referral so we could refer them if they have an open case here or and by like choosing over, there's over 150 um, service types that can be provided. So for benefits, we could say maybe they want um, food. So you can say that. And there's ways that you could advance search, um, batch refer. So you could, and then, You'll just add the different programs and go back and put in a description. So like, for example, if you're wanting to refer the client to over five different food programs, you're able to do that and then provide uh, whatever organization that responds first. You'll then resend um, like the, all the other organizations, the referral will get recalled. So that client is it getting bombarded like five different times. Um, and then if there were like multiple services that the client needs, like let's say it's food, it's housing, it's utility support, or um, you're able to do that.
Are there any questions so far? Okay, so the, I, these are I some- I actually do have a question. Yes. Have, yes. You, have you seen any service providers, um, like for instance, Team Rubicon organizations that do more of debris, like muck out, um, clean up after floods or landslides? Because um, I was just thinking about all the various needs that we saw come out of like one household last winter. And there's like that very priority, oh my, I have just a foot of mud in my house. And then there are all of those social needs that surround that. So have you seen instances where those immediate, like, I don't know, like cleanup needs are able to be met? Have organizations of that type joined Unite Us in some counties? Um, in terms, that's a great question, Anna. Um, I know that with the Florida disaster re for Hurricane Ian, um, with the assistance request form in like a number of days, they received over 600 uh, ass assistance requests. And, um, and then they were, you know, top needs that they saw were housing, food, clothing, and household goods. Um, in terms of joining the platform and having different providers providing different services, um, you know, we're always trying to get more folks that, oh, Claire, <laughs> um, Claire just shared the crisis cleanup. Um, that was kind of my thought is like, that seems like there's a, there's a parallel here mm -hmm. between crisis cleanup and unite us, but there's a different um, like sector of needs that each one addresses and crisis cleanup. So I guess, yeah, that is kind of the question. Is there a way to integrate those? But that's maybe a longer conversation. I mean, I think that's, there's definitely that possibility and opportunity here that's kind of presenting itself. I think also through my support that I provided with El Concio over the last year and a half, because I know they were involved at least with the, with flood assistance um, and just allowing people to kind of know where to go for services within the in the community. I think that's just another, not maybe a very specific example, but just another way to show everyone the opportunity of how the network can be as empowering as you all need it to be. Um, so thinking about crisis cleanup, thinking about any of these other groups that may kind of specialize more in like the cleanup focused, if we have their presence on the network, we can then streamline those needs between you all and those community members. So definitely um, something to think about. And Veronica and I can go back to our team just to see statewide kind of what's happening in this kind of uh, sector of, of services. And we can let you know um, who we have and can maybe share some of those use cases, but it's definitely in line. So good thinking. Yeah. And then with Unitas, like we're, we're a platform that provides the referral process <laughs> for providers to connect and, um, and, and be more client centered. So we're not, it's, you know, we're, we're relying on the nonprofits or the community-based organizations to be the boots on the ground. Um, and we've, you know, I've sat in conversations where in Riverside County, for example, they were also preparing for disaster um, assistance, you know, with heat, um, with aging population. Um, so they're, they're thinking along the same lines as the conversations that I've heard here in this co-ed. Yeah, but great questions. Keep them coming. And thanks, Claire, for chiming in and sharing your insights. Okay, so I can go back and share my screen. Like um, this, well, this is like a, a referral that's made. Um, if a client that wants to come in, like let's say they're new, um, Maybe they're going into, um, or they're they're maybe at a tabling event, or they're seeking services where they're not quite ready to share their information and do that intake. Um, individuals are able to share, um, you know, different services by just um, either their email or their text message. So 
I don't know if anyone wants an example, but if you share an, you know, phone number or, t or an email, we could send this information to you to, and this could be, these resources can be shared in approximately differently, 50 different languages. Um, and so there's that. And then if, um, for clients that are new and wanting to just get, um, if an organization wants to, you know, do an intake and refer them to a service, um, it, there's just three basic information, which would be, you know, their first name, their last name, and their date of birth. And that's really to see if there's any duplications um, to begin with. And um, if there's no duplications, then we would open a new it could be opening a new assist, um, existing client. Are there any other questions? Veronica, I'm wondering if it's just helpful just to go back to the Long Beach assistance request form for a moment, just to kind of let everyone look at that a little bit. Um, so this is what I was referring to that we set up for, for Bookland 2 and one and, and how the state of Florida has been mobilized for hurricane relief. So it's what we call an assistance request form. What we're looking at is this is what the city of Long Beach is using for their community, um, members to kind of self-refer into services. And so this is a completely customizable form that we can create for anyone again, at, at no additional charge or anything like this is all just your ability to use a platform, you know, as a partner. Um, but in the, where we see right here from that drop down where it says, what services are you seeking? This is where we're able to customize like what services you would want to have a part of this list for those community members to then self-refer. And then like how Veronica was showing that the provider in the typical workflow would provide that referral description, the client themselves in this situation is being able to provide their requests, like what, what's going on in their, you know, in their household, what would be helpful to, to know. And then they would provide their consent at the time of them submitting this form. And I think it's just helpful to know that in order for the referral, whether that's through the assistance request form or through an provider's account to then send to another provider, that consent has to be captured. Otherwise the referral will just kind of live in your account. Um, but if you, so again, just to kind of um, get your thoughts on this or just get your a good visual example of this, because I think this can be really empowering for um, the co-ad and, and kind of what Thrive Alliance is, is, is doing from that community lens, but also just knowing that there are so many other mini collaboratives. So when I was mentioning like in CoSide, there is um, like a community-based organization grant. And so they want to be able to better coordinate services. And so we're in the process of thinking through, okay, how can assistance request form support you all to know that if CoSide Hope has these services and then maybe um co-side workers needs this you all are able to to kind of coordinate together so just kind of wanted to to end with the, another visual of this because i do think it's important especially in this lens that we're kind of gathering today yeah so um kind of that, you know when we shared our software demo and you're probably all thinking like what's next um, in terms of joining the network, again, it's at no cost to community-based organizations. And uh, we asked just to have, you know, some basic standards of such as when referrals come in, try to respond to them within two, two to three business days and making at least three attempts over a course of 10 days. Um, and asking or organizations to keep their programs up to date. If they're accepting referrals, if they're not accepting referrals, um, they do, organizations have that, that control to add and edit their programs, to update things, um, to turn off referrals at any given point in time. Maybe they're at capacity um, or maybe there's lost of funding for those programs. Um, so those are these are some of our network standards. And then next steps, um, completing you know a partner registration form to get implemented. So or or if you want to further dialogue, you know, with either Katie or I, um, feel free to reach out to us. Um, 
I will put in the chat the form to sign up and um, we could also email this out so that you all have this information. Um, there's also ongoing training that's available for this platform. We do understand that um, you know, there, there can be a learning curve in how you all incorporate it into your organization's workflow. So I'm happy to have those dialogues and to have those training um, conversations. And, um, you know, again, recommend partners to the net to join the network because the more partners that you're all uh, regularly working with that are utilizing the platform, then it does create that wraparound service. So wonderful. Uh, Helen asked, are, is there a minimum requirement to apply to be a partner? Uh, 5013C, and if most of, if your services are at no cost, I usually um, that that does meet standards. Katie, do you want to chime in if you have more? No, I think um, I mean based on our intros and everyone, um, I think we're all you're all able to join, and you would just fill out that registration form. Um, it's pretty straightforward. It just asks for your basic organization information the programs that you would like to join, um, maybe none, maybe some, maybe all, and then just the staff members that you would like to have access. And this is the role that Veronica and I play as community engagement managers. So you, we can always set up a phone call or a meeting to talk maybe before you fill out that form or afterward. Um, and there's no minimum uh, participation requirements that we hold our our partners to. And what I mean by that is there's no like referral volume that metrics that we're keeping you on, or there's no time constraints um, or requirements for you to participate. So you can give it a try, you can mm -hmm. give it a whirl. And then if you're not feeling it, you know, you can uh, decide to no longer use it. So it's, we're really trying to make it as low barrier as possible because we know that there's already other so many demands, even from like a grant funding perspective. So we just kind of want to make this as easy as possible. And I don't want to take up too much more time, but I think just because we are in a very, you know, intimate special group here today, like if there's any other questions, remaining questions, maybe even just main takeaways together, I do think as we're kind of in this thought partnership space, it is helpful to kind of hear others' reactions. Um, so just happy to kind of end on that note and and we will uh, we'll fly away. <laughs> Thank you so much for that presentation, Katie. Um, I do, I just want to, um, I think some of the thoughts that are going through my mind right now are just like, I know many of our districts and our specifically our school sites, um, you know, they, depending on what their families need, they're coming to them and they're looking for resources. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just kind of like in my mind thinking about what that could look like. Um, and so I would love to connect with you, um, at some point, um, I put my information there, but, um, yeah, just kind of thinking about what that would look like. Absolutely. I did write your email down, so I'll give you, I'll send you a message and we can definitely set up time. We have a lot of school districts in our just neighboring, you know, counties that I can kind of share some, some good kind of examples for you just to kind of think and, um, we do have Jefferson County High School's Family Resource Center on just as like a little, you know, home example. And so I would love to talk more about that with you and, and we can see kind of what ideas kind of come up from that. Yeah. Well, thank you, Katie and Veronica. We're happy to continue pushing this out. That was a really impressive list of existing organizations that provide core services, not necessarily all the core agencies, but right. core community services to, to San Mateo County. So the more we can grow that, I think the more effective we can be as a network and we can continue to um, discuss, you know, some of those questions about, about parallel platforms, but mm -hmm. um, this is great. I think, I think we're in, we're in high need of something like this. Um does anyone else have any questions before we wrap up? 
All right. Well, thank you, Veronica and Katie. Um, I'm going to make one last plug for the Climate Summit. I don't think anyone dropped a link in the chat for that at the beginning. So again, October 11th in South San Francisco, um, everyone is welcome. It's free and you guys might even be able to come together to meet each other in person, uh, which we would love because we haven't yet had a co-ed event in person. Not that this is a co-ed event, but it, it's um, a big overlap um, with the same organizations. So um, we will see you October 11th. And if not, we will see you at the next co-ed meeting at the end of October. All right. Thank you everyone and have a good rest of the week.